In this ticket video, I assume you have already went through the Windows Client Network configuration video, which is about 25 plus minutes long video, and you learned quite a bit. So when it comes to tickets related to this sort of, uh, you know, things like networking or networking issues, of course, it could be um, many type of issues. So we're just going to discuss something that has to do with just IP configuration and what kind of uh, tickets you may get when you start working as an IT support professional. So the first ticket that I just created is related to a user. Uh, a user may call you and something similar, they will put it in the, the ticket, like email or call you. I'm unable to access the internet. It was working before, but someone from IT teams recently worked on my machine. And since then it has been down. Can someone help? Now think about it. Usually when we get a call by a user, or we have to do something to a computer, sometimes we go in and we do a lot of things. And in some cases, maybe we may forget uh, to revert the changes, or sometimes what happens is that you may have put a wrong IP or something like that in that user machine. So when the user then, let's say in the morning, came, opened the laptop, start working, it's not working, they will call you. Um, if they didn't know about this, of course, they may just call you, my internet is down. But then, of course, in your team uh, department, we communicate with each other. And then if, let's say, somebody have already worked on Stacy's ticket, it may be already in the system. And I can say, oh, okay, John worked on it, so I'm just going to assign this to John. But in any scenario, it could be anything, uh, you should be looking at certain things that I'm going to show you in the ticket right now. So then you have a little more uh, hands-on experience with network configuration at the client level, meaning at the operating system level. So let's get into our lab. So how do we get to our lab? I already showed that in my previous ticket videos, but usually I go and open a new um, tab and I'll type job skills share, go to dashboard, click on practice labs, and I'm gonna type 1102. And I'm going to open this lab and I will launch the first module in our lab. And as a reminder, we are doing custom uh, settings over here and things. It's not going to be supported by the support. So please do not send any email or they will not know anything about it. So in this case, Stacy is using Windows 11 because this is a new operating system. So let's go ahead and open PLAB Win 11 and we're going to work on PLAB Win 11 regarding to this ticket where she's complaining about internet access being down. To make this work and to create some sort of scenario, let's go ahead and let's assume that I'm gonna show you what one of our staff member did to her machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on PLAB Win 11. Um, and there you go, Windows 11 is coming up now. And basically, uh, I know at this point everything is working because you spin up a lab and everything is working good to go. So let's assume one of our staff members went into her machine, they were doing stuff, and then they went to the network and uh, in internet settings over here. And basically, while they were doing things, let's, let's just assume they went to internet. And what they did is they went to a IP address over here and somehow... Uh, from manual, which is, this is a static address, they change it to DC, uh, DHCP, which in many cases in the company, it is going to be actually automatic like this. In the very rare cases, a staff member or uh, a client will have a static IP address for whatever reason. Usually servers have it uh, like this. So, uh, I mean, this person maybe was thinking that this machine is uh, a normal staff machine, so I'm going to put it on DHCP. Nobody told them that this is a special developer and we need to give them a static IP. You see, this is just a communication. This is just somebody going out there and changing the things, right? So, and that commonly happens in our uh, career. Uh, it's not always a system is having an issue. It's we also go in there and we start changing things and we create the issues for ourselves. So it's very normal. So we're going to go ahead and save this automatic to DHCP. But now you see when I did that, I lost my connection. So the cool thing about these labs are you can actually directly get into this machine by using a console access now. Before you were using a remote connection, which this whole product 
is designed when you click on something it automatically connects you because of that remote access but now what we are going to do we're going to actually click here and we're going to use this console mode and you see that when i click on console mode i am in front of that machine again and this is what now stacy is seeing after a day of work so i first i showed you the scenario what happened right so now stacy came in she's she's like normally getting into the machine and she's like okay let me just do all control delete on her keyboard she's like right in front of the machine and let's assume administrator is stacy that's just the name and i log log in okay so now she logged into the machine as you can see she will click on browser and she's seeing this which is how people are going to see if they don't have an internet connection now that's where you are when you get in this type of calls related to the network settings in most cases it's going to look like this so so think about it you have to really uh look into different type of troubleshooting you have to stop over here and you have to analyze okay what's going on over here if i open any other browser in this machine does it work it's totally not working and if you look on the right side you see how our internet have no internet access as well so there are many things you have to think about immediately one is that make sure that you look at the laptop and is it really or the desktop is it connected to a lan connection meaning the hardware connection so then you have to really think about that if there's a phone does the phone have an ip address uh, what if that little uh, ethernet wire is loosened so you need to maybe plug it in what what about the where it's connected to the wall plates is it really connected there so you just check that as well if it's wi-fi and you don't see the connection did did somebody turn on the or turn off the wi-fi right so there are there could be other things for troubleshooting but i'm not going in there right now at this point you know that somebody went out there and did the changes in your team and they're not available but uh stacy is having an issue so you already know what's going on at the network configuration level right so you're like okay i think i know what's going on uh stacy so what i'm going to do right here i'm actually going to come over here and actually change this ip um uh, basically back to um um the static to make it work but in in her case it could be you went out there and you put a wrong ip address and maybe you need to put it on dhcp right so there's this could be vice versa you either need to put it on dhcp from a static ip or you could be putting it back on the ip that it used to be on there so one mistake that we just did which is something that i just realized we did not actually take a screenshot of that IP address and I forgot what the IP address of this machine was. So maybe I can rewind this video and then tell you exactly what it was. Now, here's a this is a very, very common mistake. And I just did it in this video is that we will do things. And if it's something to do with data or something to do with like you know, numbers or IP addresses or configuration and some customization already done, then 100% take a screenshot take a screenshot of each page that you're going to do if you have to redo the application if you have to redo the settings you have to go back and put the same type of information again to make things work or else you're going to have a lot of problems in this type of job so here you go i got lucky because i was recording the video and i went back and captured the information so this is the information that i need so let's go back to stacy's machine now Let's move this on the right side i know what it is so um there are two ways uh, of course you can actually come over here and search and you can also do something like this like you can type network and when you when you type network you can see that you have information coming up like network and all that kind of stuff you can go to control panel from here and then go to network and internet and then here you can actually open the uh, network and um, status and this is the ethernet uh, connection that you can actually change things so if i right click or actually click on it you see it opens up that properties for me another way would be the way i showed you from the modern way you click on the network and internet settings and then basically you can come over here and then change the ethernet settings from here like i said we did this from DHCP, so I can come over here and edit the IP, edit the DHCP, sorry, the DNS, 
and then I will click OK and maybe that will get our connection back. If you don't know that way, simple is just follow the classic way is just go over here click on this little adapter or you can click on change adapter settings it takes you to this option and you see how you have two different options so we're going to be working on this one properties and what did we change we changed the ip address before right so we're going to go ahead and click on ipv4 properties and look it's DHCP. So like I said, in your company, it could be somebody who went out there, they actually clicked here and then they added IP addresses. Maybe they put something wrong or they forgot or they mistyped it and they forgot they left home and everything. They they think everything was working, but tomorrow says he's having an issue. So I'm gonna come over here and actually change this to back to where, what it was, 168, zero. And then that address is three. And the seven mask is correct, 255.255.0. And the default gateway is 192.168 and 0.250. Now you must, if you're new and you're like, what are these numbers? I don't understand these numbers. Now, as an IT support professional, uh, if you went back to one of our previous uh, chapters, you probably already know the basics of this, but if you want to know a little more about gateways and subnet mask, a little more detail, then you should be taking our networking course, which is basically a, we have a proper course designed for network sysadmins, cybersecurity administrators, cloud engineers. So we made this one big course, network and system administration course. And in, in that instructor actually goes in and break down everything in many, many hours of networking knowledge so that is something that i would recommend if you uh, feel like you want to know this stuff but uh, as an it support profession no one's going to really test you really hard on this stuff i mean they they know that this is not your area so uh again we are going to put the dns which is something that i copied and now I'm putting everything. I'm I, like, I went back to Stacy's machine as an IT support. I'm like talking to her or maybe on the phone, I'm like, yeah, everything is good. And, you know, keeping that normal communication uh, if they are on the phone or they are, they're there in front of you. So I'm just going to click OK here. And like, OK, yeah, I think we did a mistake here. So I'm trying to fix it right now. So I went ahead and start putting the IP. You see how I, when I did all of that, what happened? I got the internet connection back. And if we want to test our actual, uh, you know, automatic logon again without console, so I can uncheck the console and you see my automatic login started to work again. So that's just to showcase I made an issue, computer went down, the network went down, sorry. And then I fixed it by just showcasing that how easy it is for us to make a mistake by just putting a wrong IP or changing a little settings in networking and boom, you got everything down now. So this is your area to play around and get yourself more comfortable because this is something that you will come across throughout your IT career if you work in an infrastructure type of jobs. IT support, networking, systems administration, cybersecurity, cloud administration, you cannot get away with from a, just a normal client networking. You will always work with some sort of this type of connections in in your whole career so that is how you're going to fix this type of issue so let's move into ticket number two so ticket number two is something that we already did right so ticket number two is hi this is adam from networking team now remember you are not only working with clients or staff members you're also working with People that could be vendors, uh, they are helping your network team or network devices, or they could be network engineers. And then they will just call you one day and say, hey, can someone from help this team visit Stacy's machine and provide the information listed, including IPv4, DNS, gateway, we are unable to connect to that switch uh, from that switch or whatever. Whatever is the reason, the engineer cannot connect to that machine and they need your help. And that is actually some, in most cases, we as a help desk or IT support professionals have to actually provide this type of information because we're physically there or we may be going there and then you will need to provide it. So easy way, right? I already showed you where to get that information. You can come over here and manually go into this. Or if you want to learn some command stuff, which you are going to learn later on in these chapters, this it's called network commands. You can just go to CMD 
which is going to open a command line like this. And basically what you type is ipconfig slash all or ipconfig. Okay. So from ipconfig, you can get that information. You can basically uh, get this information. That's what they asked for, gateway DNS. Or another way is just copy this information and send it to them. Hey, this is the, the information that I got from Stacy's machine. Maybe they get they will get more information by this way. Uh, so you must be wondering, can they get this remotely? Well, they can't because remember, they're having issue. That's why they need your help. In most cases, 99.9% and network engineers will never ask you for this type of stuff if they can access things, but they will need your help when they can't and that is where you need to know how to quickly go in there and get this basic information this is so basic stuff but if you are new to it i'm sure uh it's like how do i get this information or where do i get it the best way where do i get it so best way would be cmd ip config slash all and copy paste and put that information and send it to them um that's how they get more information from that machine and they may check things oh you know what this is missing so let's fix that first or this is missing let's fix that first so that's how you can help them out. This is how you're going to deal with the network configuration type of issues. Of course, I just made only two tickets. It could be anything, any anything in the world, but this is how you are going to play around with the network configuration at the client level. Thank you.